Good morning, family. How's everyone doing this morning? morning. It's so good to see you. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's worship the King together. Are you in the lobby? Come on in. Let's worship together. Why don't you come up to the front? We're going to glorify Him together. There is no one like you, Lord. Our King of glory. Praise your name. We're going to praise together, amen. Our praise is a weapon, and we're going to use that weapon this morning. We're going to speak to situations, and we're going to speak to the mountain, and things will begin to change, amen.
time with all we have, amen. We just want to welcome everybody one more time. This is the day that the Lord has made, and today we choose, amen, to be glad in it, to give him praise for all that he has done, for all that he is, and for all that is to come. And we want to welcome all of our online worshipers. We thank you for joining us today. And we just want to just extend that welcome and, and just that sense of family and community. We're here. We're going to praise and worship our King. And we're going to rejoice in all that He is. Amen. Hallelujah. I wish I could tell you, wish I could describe it, but I can't contain it, can't keep it to myself. There aren't enough colors to paint the whole picture, not enough words to ever say what I found. Come on, let's sing together. Wonderful and beautiful. Without joining the chorus, there aren't enough words to make the harmony. It's the song of the angels, angels. the song of the ages, angels. the melody of earth and heaven's symphony. That's my God, that's my shepherd, my defender, that's my king, that's my anchor, my defender. You're so good. 
in your mercy and love endure us forever so we glorify you lord god
our back we know it Lord God our expectation is good things because you're always faithful no matter what the situation looks like you see the beginning to the end so we trust
nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do I just want and nothing else and nothing else Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, one more time, I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, worship by taking communion. Has everyone received their elements? If you haven't, please raise your hand and the usher will get you one. Corinthians 11, 23, 26 reads, For I have received from the Lord what I have also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and we had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it and remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Can everyone take the cup into their hand, please? Thank you, Father, for the gift of your son. By the stripes that fell on his back, my body is healed from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet. Every cell, every organ, every function of my body is healed, restored, and renewed. In Jesus' name, I believe and I receive. Next, take the cup and repeat after me, please. Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious blood. Your shed blood has removed every sin from my life. Through your blood, I am forgiven of all my sins, past, present, and future, and made completely righteous. Today, I celebrate and partake of this new covenant and my inheritance, which includes preservation, healing, wholeness, and provision. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Amen. You may drink. Can everyone please stand? We're going to read the Church Apostles' Creed together. We're going to say it together. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Praise God. Next, we're going to have Anthony come and read you the announcements. Well, coming to church, you may be seated. And I love, love sharing the body with the family. I got to, uh, every time I take communion with my daughter, Rama, and she sips on the blood of Jesus, she says, that's good. That's good. So isn't the blood of Jesus good? Amen. Amen. Well, I want to welcome all of our guests today, our first, second, third time visitors. We have a connection center out in the lobby next to a Start Here banner. We'd love to get some information from you. And uh, we have pastors and greeters that would love to greet you after the service. And for those Joining online, you could head over to ccop.org slash connect and fill out a connection card and we'll get to know you on there. And so Covenant Church, would you welcome our guest this morning? I don't think I said it, but my name's Anthony, so I want to welcome you as well along with James and the house here today. So, well, without further ado, Covenant Church... It's offering time. Thank you. I appreciate that. I want to share just a a brief encouragement out of the book of Galatians. We're going to jump into chapter 6, starting in verse 9 to verse 10. And we're in the New American Standard. And it reads, And let us, oh, there it is. And let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due season or due time we shall reap If we do not grow weary, so then while we have opportunity, let us do good to all men and especially to those who are of the household of the faith. There's a, uh, this verse 10 can be translated saying, so then according as we have season, or that is opportunity, let us work that which is in each case good as we are able, while we are able And when we are able, we have now this season in this life, a season for sowing. And then afterwards is the due season of reaping. So really our whole life as a believer, really in every sense as a person, is a seasonable opportunity for sowing. And there's also these narrow pockets of of convenient times for sowing. And, and what's tricky is that we, of, we often find ourselves looking for the even more convenient times to sow or the even more convenient times to give or to serve. It's like saying, Lord, I'll give you a million dollars. And he says, well, why don't you honor me with the 10 in your pocket? And how we're always looking for that still even more convenient season not recognizing that this is the lifetime to sow. This is the life that we have to, to sow and that the enemy is after us to because sh- his time is short and so he's trying to sharpen his zeal in hindering us from sowing. But we have to recognize and be even more zealous because our time is short as well. And so we don't want to miss an opportunity to sow. So... So, so, (laughs) so, so. (laughs) And so lastly, I know that we've all have sown before, but not one of us have sown now. 
So as we prepare our, our hearts, our alms, our gift, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for, for all that you've given us. And as we have freely been given, let us freely give. Lord, you are a generous God and you've bestowed upon us blessing upon blessing. Let us be faithful in all that you've given us. Let us be faithful to even the teachers of the word that, we, that everything that we've received, that we would give to them for their work towards us. Lord, let us not grow weary or faint in well-doing so that in that due season we would reap a harvest. Let us not be faint in the harvesting season when it's time to reap. Lord, give us strength and zeal for these days. In Jesus' name, amen. We also have alms. You can give a dollar or more to the poor, and uh, the ushers will be around to collect them. So ushers, you may be released to serve us. We thank you so much for being so faithful to the house. Amen. Amen. Well, I just have a few announcements this morning. We have our Roots class. It's a semi-regular class for the year, and the, the next class actually starts tomorrow night here at 7 p.m., so you, it's still not too late to register. It's a class that teaches biblical literacy, principles of biblical interpretation, and apologetics, so that's what you believe and why. And so sign up. You don't want to miss it. It's tomorrow night, so get on the Church Center app, and you can find out the more information on there. We also have our Good Friday and Easter weekend. Now, this will be starting Good Friday Healing Service, March 29th at 10 a.m. Good Friday Healing Service, March 29th at 10 a.m. And then we go into an evening production service at 7 p.m., our Good Friday service. You don't want to miss it. And then, obviously, March 31st, we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. It's going to be an amazing time. Bring your family, your friends for this whole weekend experience together. And uh, yeah, you just don't want to miss it. So, And then lastly, we're in our first fruit season. It's our annual time, and it's coming up next week. So this is why we're, we're adamant about now just preparing your hearts and, and just pressing into being obedient to what the Lord's saying to you as a family, as a house, how you want to be faithful in what God's given you. It's also going to be our family Sunday. Actually, before I jump there, we want anyone who has a story or first, fr- first fruits testimony, we want you to send a video to share your story at CCOP. The link should be on the, on the back behind me. Uh, you can record a selfie video, 30 seconds, a minute. We would just love to hear from you guys, our, our house, from people who have been impacted by giving. We want to hear all that the Lord's doing in the house. Amen. So, but that will also be tied with our family Sunday where we'll have child dedications, honoring new members, baptisms. It's still not too late to sign up and register, but it's, it's going to just be a celebration, a huge kickoff, glory moment for the house, and you don't want to miss it. So sign up in the Church Center app. If you have any more information you need, head over to the website, check out the app. And with that being said, we have some video announcements and a testimony for you to be encouraged by. Amen. Hey, what's going on, Pittsburgh men? My name is Kent Chevalier. I have the privilege of serving on staff with Athletes in Action as the Pittsburgh Steelers chaplain. And I want to personally invite you to come out April 27th to Four Men Only event. Man, you can get tickets right at the link below here. We're not going to be selling any of those tickets at the door, so you need to get them when you register online. Come out and hear from a whole bunch of Steelers, a great lineup we've got a great band that's set up for the day. So man, I would love for you to get your tickets right now. Come out April 27th, four men only. I hope to see you there. My name is Mark Tamalo. We've been coming to Oasis City for two years. Uh, I have a wife, Kara, and two daughters, and we just love the church. Yeah, First Fruits was last year when Apostle Bill uh, laid it out in that March time frame. And First Fruits is planting a seed when you don't know what's to come, according to the scripture, 
and then relying on that seed to produce a blessing for your life. It makes perfect sense. First Fruits was not our first experience with like kind of giving in faith or giving sacrificially. God had done other things in our lives probably 10, 15 years prior um, when we made a commitment to Him to get out of debt. We hadn't been tithing. We had made a declaration to God like, we are going to get out of debt and we're going to start tithing. And so we kind of came up with a plan of how long it was going to take us to, you know, kind of do this. Dave Ramsey snowball method to get out of debt. And it was like three and a half years. And God like supernaturally got us out of that debt in eight and a half months. So I think it's a mind change and a heart change of this is all his. Like, who am I to not be willing to just give what is already his? To me, that first fruits uh, concept, you're giving first to sow into something that you and God can go after together. I have a tendency to kind of want to control things a little more. So when I was asking God and praying on, you know, what should we give as our first fruits, I just felt like he said, let Mark decide. And so <laughs> I'm not great at doing that. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And I just gave it all to Mark. I literally said, whatever you want to give, God told me just to let you make that decision. And I was completely at peace with that because I knew that's what God had said. That was in, you know, kind of that April time frame, um, started to think about it, started to pray on it. There were th kind of three distinct uh, first fruits that that uh, I had written down. One of them was serving on a board of directors. Didn't even get my resume done and an organization had reached out by June and said, we want you to, to consider interviewing for a board position. Well, I had documented uh, and what I was thinking and what I thought I heard Holy Spirit say, this had checked off every box and it was exactly what uh, we had sowed into from a first fruit. He went above and beyond because this was an organization that I had a passion for and it's in an industry that I love, that I've been part of for about 20 years. So I think this past year, God's just continuing to encourage me to see him as our provider, um, to trust him with everything and finance is just such a small piece of that when you really think of what the kingdom of God is. Whether it's money, whether it's time, whether it's expertise, the idea that you're working with him and co-laboring to advance the kingdom. It's not an amount to God, it's the posture of your heart. Um, so yeah, I would just say, talk to God, posture your heart um, and see what he says and then just follow, just be faithful and know that if it's coming from him, he is gonna bless you. I really loved how Apostle Bill, I love how uh, Oasis City frames it, that it's it's not a fundraiser. That faith raising is real. And when you see God respond, when you see in your own life you give or you submit to something and there's an answer, that level of faith just increases. And when that faith increases, all sorts of amazing supernatural things happen. Amen. Wow. Well, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Good morning, saints. Good morning. And all of the rest of you. <laughs> I'm sure there are a whole lot of people here who are saints and others who are striving for that particular place. It's great to be back and uh, it's good to be in the house. Amen. So this is my teammate, and uh, she's going to greet you and pray for me, and then we'll go for it. It's so wonderful to be back home from a long trip, but it went well. God was with us. Hallelujah. So, Father, we're thankful this morning for the bishop and for the word of the Lord that he has in his heart to give us. He got up real early this morning to finish it off, so I know it's going to be wonderful. So I bless you, honey. Preach your heart out. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. She's wonderful. She spoke for the women at the uh, conference in Atlanta and uh, knocked it out of the park several times into the river, I guess. That's how when you hit it. So if you're watching my way of live stream or the internet, we want to thank you for being a part of our life and I want to just celebrate you, the body of Christ, the church of 
of Jesus Christ Covenant Church. You are amazing people, and we get to visit a lot of churches, and some are bigger and some are smaller, but none are as good as this. And there's no place like home. Clarence was with us, Apostle Bill, and Len Thamalaris, and we just had an amazing time in South Africa. And they had a lot of challenges, but challenges are what determines the kind of metal that you have in God. So tell someone next to you, say, I'm getting ready to believe something exciting. Amen. Go with me, please, in your Bibles. We're just going to move through this because I want to do some real strong communication on what we can do and how we get involved in what God's called us to do, the principles that are in Scripture that are laid out for us. God created a universe that works all the time. He created principles that work all the time. They will work for you or they will work against you, depending upon your willingness to cooperate with them. I believe in the principle of of what's called the law of gravity. And that principle works day and night, 24 hours a day. And whether you like it or not, you can't change it. This book is God's word. You can't change it. It's right all the time. And If you haven't read it lately, it would be good to do so because a lot of your life is going to depend upon your willingness to do what God's Word says. I believe the Bible is the Word of God, and I believe that God wants us to prosper. It's His desire to do that. In fact, Isaiah says He teaches us to prosper. And when He teaches us to prosper, if we are not prospering, it's either because we haven't heard the teaching or we've heard the teaching and we think, "Mm, I don't know if I can do that or not. Sacrificing is one thing. Giving out of your own heart, giving out of obedience is a critical thing. And the principles in Scripture that relate to giving are so clear that you can't miss them. And my wife and I have been following these principles for a long time, and so I'm going to say to you, like, the Apostle Paul said to his, his audience, follow my example. When Paul said, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, he wasn't talking about their God. He was talking about his God. He says, the God I serve will supply all your needs. The problem is when we read that passage in, in the book of Philippians, we think that we can say the same thing. And you can't say the same thing until you have the experience that's associated with it. My God shall supply, Bishop's God, shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. You have to come to the place where you can say, my God, not just Bishop's God, but my God. I was preaching on giving, I was in South Africa, and I was talking about the principles of giving, And uh, one of the guys got upset with me, and uh, he just stood up and shouted out, that stuff only works in America. That's what he said. And then I thought, he has no idea that that stuff was written before there was an America. (laughs) So what, what you're about to get in terms of principles that I believe will work in your life, uh, it's going to be beneficial to you. Let me give you some definitions. In fact, let me just give you the title. Saying and sowing. Saying and sowing. Don't just sow, say. Attach something to what you give. Attach a word. Say, God, I'm sowing the seed just like you said. I'm doing what you said do, God. Here is my money, God. Thank you for giving it to me. Multiply it according to your promise. Attach a phrase to it. Somebody gives me an offering. I don't just let them hand me an offering. I take their hand and I take their offering and I pray over it. And I say, now God, please multiply this seed that they're sowing into my life. Give them a harvest of righteousness. Attach words to your giving. Say that, please. Attach 
Sing and sowing, harnessing the creative power in first fruits. Let me give you some definitions. The first fruit, the Hebrew word is bikurim, bikurim, and it means promise to come. First fruit, promise to come. Say that, please. Promise to come. And then there's another word for first fruit, and it's called bereshit. And you have to pronounce that S H I T with an E. Well, there it is. I don't know how to, I mean, what do you think? Let me, I tell you, I got to tell you this story. I, I thought I wouldn't tell any more stories, but there was this lady who read the word S H I T T I M. It's the King James word for acacia wood. And Noah built the ark out of shittim wood, but she wouldn't say it. And so she said, Noah built the ark out of chicken wood. All right. Because she wanted to avoid that S H I T. So I'm trying to help you. <laughs> say, bear a sheet. Say that, please. Okay. Anytime you have an IT or an IM, it has an IM sound. Beginning, what comes first, starting point, first and best, first fruit. And then the word create. Say create. create. How many you know some creative people? People who can t- take stuff and make stuff out of it. But the word create is the word bara. And it means to make something that has not been in existence before. Let's look at some verses. Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless. And darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. In the beginning. That word translated beginning is the same word from which we get our word first fruit. Creation is in the first fruit. Creation is in the first fruit. In other words, the power of your first fruit is creative power. It's not just something that you give. It's something that has the capacity to grow, to enlarge, to become something. Creation is in the first fruit. Say that, please. Creation is in... It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, but not the heavens. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, but not in heaven. The Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. In fact, the Spirit of God is always moving. The Spirit of God is always hovering. He's always, in fact, that word is a good word for fluttering as a bird flutters over her nest of eggs, as she hovers over them, as she imparts warmth to those eggs. That's the same thing that the Holy Spirit is doing. There there are eggs. There are potential things that you have. And if you want them to find growth, you need to allow the Holy Spirit to flutter over them. In fact, invite him to do so. Moving on the face of of the surface of the waters, then God said, everybody say that, then God said, then God said, say it please, then Then God said, you and I are created in the image of God. If God is a creator, then we have become creators. If God can cause things to come into existence by saying something, guess what? You cause things to come into existence by saying something. Death and life, we're told in Proverbs 18. Death and life, death and life, death and life are in the power of the tongue. That word power is translated from the Hebrew word yad, yad. And that word yacht is often translated hand. Hand. One of the writers that says it like this, commentators, he says, as the hand is the extension of the body that has the capability of changing the environment that it's in. If I say to you, go clean up that mess, your hand's going to have to get involved. Are you there? So when you say, do this, 
if you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to open the door. When your mind says open the door, your hand has to participate in it. Your hand has the power to cause things to take place. But it's not your hand that he's talking about. Death and life are in the hand of the tongue. Death and life are in the hand, hand of the tongue. He said, well, that's a weird thing. But the Bible, the Bible does a lot of weird stuff. We'll look at it in a minute. Listen to this. Spirit of God's moving. God said, God said, look at Hebrews 11, verse 3. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word or the rhema of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. What is seen was not made out of things that are visible. You can see stuff, but they weren't made from things that you see. They were made from things that you can't see. I'll expand on that. Passion Translation says, Faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's Word. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. Paul says in Corinthians, God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. In other words, light didn't have a choice. When God says light, come. He didn't just say light, come out of light, but he said light, come out of darkness. The womb of light is darkness. Sometimes you're thinking, I don't know if I can go through this. And you have no idea that your dark season is the place that God is getting ready to call light out. And he commands it. He does just say, would you like to come out? He says, come out, light. When he says light, let there be light, light says, here I am. And it comes out and everything is lit up when light comes. By faith. One translation says, by faith we understand that the universe was created by God's command so that what is seen has been made from things that are not visible. Have you ever heard of atoms? Atoms. A-T-O-M-S. How many have heard of atoms? Can I just see a hand indicating that? All right, good. How many have ever seen one? But you believe there are atoms? Here's what the scripture says. By faith we understand that what is seen, that chair you're sitting in, this table that I have, was not made from something you can see. It was made from something you can't see. And God is doing that kind of thing. By faith, by faith. Let me just read a quote to you that I have enjoyed for some time. Listen very carefully. Physicists are now aware of subatomic particles that hover in and around everything that exists. One interesting characteristic of these particles is that they seem to take on the properties or expectations of the scientists studying them. This has led to the speculation that these particles may be the creative building blocks of the universe. All mass is surrounded by hovering possibilities. I love that phrase. All mass is surrounded by hovering possibilities. Somebody say that with me. All mass is surrounded by... And then what follows is this statement. Waiting only to be spoken to in order to become waiting only to be spoken to in order to become. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. I tell people all the time, you are framing your worlds by what you say. You are building the kind of life you want to live in or you don't want to live in by what you say. If you don't like the life you're living in, start building another one with right words, yeah. with correct phrases, with statements that say, this is where I am. Don't stop saying, I'm going to be poor all, all my days. Somebody just said to me today, there, there aren't many good men left. I said, I don't want to live in a world where there aren't many good men left. 
In fact, Elijah thought that. He says, God, I'm the only one left. And God says, you're, you're tripping. <laughs> he says, you can't. You can't be the only one left. He says, in fact, I've got 7,000 that you haven't even seen. Stop declaring things that don't exist. Stop declaring the negative things that you see and begin to talk about the positive things that are already existing. The Bible teaches me that I am a child of God. I, the Bible tells me I am no longer a sinner. I stopped saying I'm a sinner saved by grace a long time ago. Because I don't intend to be a sinner for the rest of my life. You know, we're all sinners. I said, well, you might be. <laughs> but doesn't Paul say, I'm a chief of sinners? He, is said, he said that, but he didn't mean I'm sinning right now. He meant I will never outlive my capacity to be a sinner. You're going to live in a body, but that body has the capability of choosing right and wrong. Say the words that fit your characteristics. Say the words that fit who you are. Say the words that fit I, your identity. You've got an identity. You're, you're, you are supernatural. You are a supernatural person. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are not limited by the things that people see around you. We were in, we were in Cuba. We were in Cuba a few years ago, and uh, our plane was delayed. And so uh, one, of the, one of the guys with us, he says, man, we're going to miss our plane. And I said, stop saying that. He says, yeah, but we're going to miss our plane. We're not going to get I said, stop saying that. He wouldn't say it, so I moved away from him. <laughs> and I just said, I am not missing my plane. We both got to the same airport, and I got on a plane coming home. I had to do a little kind of digging around and fly from one place to another, spent the night in New Jersey, but I got back to Covenant Church in time to preach. While I was on pulpit, he was on a bus trying to get back to his church because he said he was going to miss his plane, and he did. <laughs> All mass, say it please, All mass. is surrounded by hovering possibilities, waiting only to be spoken to in order to become. Death and life are in the, say hand. Death and life are in the hand of the tongue. Let me give you an example. Dennis, do you see that bottle of water right there underneath the chair? Could you bring that? Give that to Malika, please. Malika, there's a young lady sitting right behind you. Give her the bottle, right to your left, second row. Would you give that to the lady right across the aisle here? Give that to the guy behind you. Give that to the lady across from you. Lady across from you, would you just bring me that bottle? No, stop right there. I have the capability of moving that bottle all over this room. With just my tongue, you can change your world by determining what pieces of furniture you want to be in your life and what pieces of furniture you don't want to be in your life. Are you getting this? So lady, would you bring that bottle? Pastor Barbara, would you just come for just a moment? Just hang on. Just hang on. Give her a word from the Lord. You're going to have a word? Shh. Many riches. Hallelujah. They're coming into your life. An unexpected deposit of funds that not only do you need, but what you want. God's going to deliver to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, the Bible says when you give to a prophet, mm -hmm. you receive the prophet's reward. So give me the thing. Thank you. You, got, you got your reward.
Are you okay? Listen to these words. Matthew 17, 20. He said to them, because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say. If you have faith, you will say. Somebody say that. If you have faith. Tell it to the person next to you. If you have faith, you will say. Listen to Matthew 21, 21. Jesus answered and said to them, truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, even if you say to this mountain, say please, even if you say, be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. It will happen. Look at Luke 17, 6. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and be planted and it would obey you. If you have faith like a mustard seed, you would say. If you have faith, you will say. If you have faith, you will say. If I have faith, I will. If I have faith, I will. I'm just waiting for a few more people to join me. If I have faith, I will say. If I have faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 13. I love this passage of scripture. But having the same spirit of faith, the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we are also speaking. If you believe, it requires you to say something. Say it. I'm required to say something if I'm a believer. You remember I told you the story of the man who sent his dad a bird that could speak two languages and he ate it. And he got upset with his dad. Why did you eat it? He said, that bird could speak two languages. And he said, well, if he could speak two languages, he should have said something. Now look, your survival depends upon your willingness to say something. Tell somebody next to you, say, it's time to say something. I believe, therefore I speak. Look at Isaiah 28, verse 24. Says, does the farmer plow continually to plant seed? Does he continually turn and harrow the ground? Just checking on my time here. Does he not level his surface and sow dill and scatter cumin and plant wheat in rows, barley in its place, rye within its area? No, notice what he's saying. There, there is a place where you plant dill, a tiny seed, scatter cumin, Plant wheat in rows, barley in its place, and rye within its area. In other words, you're going to plant rye here, and you're going to plant barley here, and you're going to scatter cumin over here. In other words, he's doing this. How did the farmer get all of that information? Notice what it says. His God instructs and teaches him properly. When you don't know anything, you can always ask God. When you don't understand anything, you can always ask God. When you are struggling to get information and you can't get it, you can always ask God. You can always ask God. If any man or woman or child, white, black, brown, orange, green, if you lack wisdom, you only ask God. Just ask. God, how much money should I give in first fruits? Don't ask him if you don't want to do it. That's the thing. Oh, God, did you really say that? If you lack it, if you need it, ask God. He is generous. He gives liberally. He doesn't rebuke you. What you ask me that question for? He says, come on, just ask me. Ask me, and I will help you. I will get you out of your circumstance. And then look at Isaiah 48, 17. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. Who teaches you to profit. Who teaches you to profit. People call the church a non-profit institution. But it shouldn't be. 
Sometimes it's a non-profit institution because there aren't any profits there. <laughs> there are people who don't believe in profits. And there are people who don't believe in profits who don't believe in profiting. God wants to teach us to profit. He wants to teach us that you can have, you can have benefit by being here in my presence. I didn't call you here to be poor. I didn't invite you into my family to be poor. I didn't invite you in my family to struggle for the rest of your life. I'd invite you into the kingdom of God to be less than a king. I want you to prosper. I want you to profit. In fact, John, who was the closest one to Jesus, he wrote in 3 John, and he said these words, My beloved, I desire that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I want you to prosper. I want... Tell somebody next to you, God wants you to prosper. Now, with all of that said, let me take you to a principle. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 26. I've been rushing through this because this is a long passage. Verse 1. Then it shall be, then it shall be, when you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance and you possess it and live in it. Now, let me just pause here. As much as this verse is written in the Old Testament to Old Testament believers, it's also written to us for a different issue. We, you and I have become inheritors. We have been transferred, Paul says in the book of Colossians, we've been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son. We have received an inheritance. I am walking in my inheritance, probably not as much of it as I would like to walk in, but it's always going to be dependent upon me. So I have entered the land. I've, I've entered the salvation place. I'm in the kingdom of God. I am part of something that is no longer a part of the world. I'm in this. And when he says, when you enter the land, which God shall, you shall take some of the first, some of the first of all the produce of the ground which you bring in from your land that the Lord God gives you, and you shall put it in a basket. Isn't that interesting? You shall put it in a basket. We're, li we're literally following that one. I'll tell you that one right now. Put, put it in a basket. Put it in a basket. I'm trying to steady myself here. All right. <laughs> a task, get a task, get a <laughs> Okay. Got rid of that. Put it in a basket. Say, put it in a basket. Go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to establish his name. What does that mean? Find a church. Find a place that has the presence of God. Find a place that you can identify with. All churches aren't the same. They can all preach the same thing, but there are distinctives in terms of the kind of churches that there are. Pittsburgh is, is loaded with great churches, a lot of great churches. And if you wanted to be a member of a great church, you wouldn't have to go anywhere once you got here. But that's all I'm saying. But the... But there are others. I'm just saying there are others, but they ain't this one. All right. He says, he says, put it in the basket. Go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to establish his name. So you're here because you believe that there's something here that God has for you. And it's distinctive. And a lot of us, I've been to a lot of places and, a lot of, and I've enjoyed them. But when I come back home, be it ever so humble, be it ever so wonderful, there ain't no place like this place, anywhere near this place, so this must be the place. Look at verse 3. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time. Go to the priest who is in office at that time. Now let me ask you a hard question. Who is the priest that's in office at this time? No. Who said you? 
Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You didn't know to say Jesus Christ. I can't believe you guys. Go to that Roots class. Get the Bible. Get the Word of God in you. Who is your high priest? Jesus. Who is your only high priest? Jesus. Who intercedes on your behalf? Jesus. Who sits at the right hand of God? Jesus. Who is the priest in office at this time? Jesus. <laughs> so you go to him. And notice, please, he says, and say. You go to him and you say. I declare this day to the Lord my God that I've entered the land which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Now, who, what, what, what Moses is teaching them is this. Don't just bring your offering, but bring words with your offering. You are in the kingdom of God. You're saved. You're sanctified. You're filled with the Holy Ghost. And you walk in truth most of the time. And you're believing the Lord for all the things... <laughs> All the things that he has for you. So when you get to him, you say something. Amen. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. Verse 5. Read with verse 5 with me. Come on. You shall answer. Is it on the screen? Come on. You shall answer say, before the Lord your God. Now here's where you give your testimony. My father was a wandering Aramean. He went down to Egypt, sojourned there, and few in number, but there he became a great and mighty populous nation. Egyptians treated us harshly, afflicted us, and imposed hard labor on us. Then we cried to the Lord. All he is doing here is saying to them, tell God your story. Remind him of what he has done for you. Look what the Lord has done. Tell God what he's done. Testify to him. Tell him how good he is. Tell him how great he is. The goodness of God that has followed you. He brought you out of darkness and... He brought you out of darkness and... All right, say, I'm just going to give you the words because you haven't read this verse yet. Into his marvelous light. All right, say that. Into. All right. He brought you out of darkness and into his marvelous light and you're telling that story and you're holding it out and you're saying it before the priest his priest who who is the priest that you're speaking to <laughs> Jesus look at verse 10 and here's what you're going to say to him now behold I have brought the what the first of the produce of the ground in other words when you bring your first fruits tell him I am bringing to you the first of the produce of the ground which you you would, now look, you and I are not farmers. Oh, are there any farmers here? I don't want to. I'm, I'm going to put you down. Any farmers? Two farmers. Great. Um, what do you do with your first fruits? Do you, do you just eat them yourself or do you? <laughs> you give too much. I have brought the first of the produce of the ground which you, Lord, have given me. I'm bringing you something that you gave me. I'm, you're, you're missing this. I have brought the first fruit of the produce of the ground, which you, O oh Lord, have given me. I'm bringing you something that you have given me. I'm bringing you something. So when I have my first fruit offering and I, and I stand here, I'm going to say to God, I'm bringing you something that you have given me. You didn't make it up on your own. You didn't create it. You didn't do anything. You, you became a steward of something that God entrusted to you, and it's multiplied for a number of reasons, but I'm bringing God something that he gave me. Verse 11, And you and the Levite and the aliens among you shall rejoice in all the good which the Lord your God has given you and your household. Drop down to verse 13. You shall say before the Lord your God, I have removed the sacred portion from my house and also have given it to the Levite. Now here's what the scripture is teaching us, that the tithe is the Lord's. It's his. And I have to return it to him. 
when I return it to him, I take from the tithe, I take from the offering, and I, I clearly make a distinction between one-tenth of what he's given me, and I remove it from the rest of it, and I call that, and the Bible calls that the sacred portion. And he says, I have removed the sacred portion from my house. And I've given it to those that are, are desirous and, and are commanded to receive that. I have not transgressed or forgotten any of your commandments. I have not eaten of it. I didn't eat my tithe. Nor have I removed any of it while I was unclean, nor offered. I have listened to the voice of the Lord my God. I have done according to all that you've done, commanded me. Now, verse 15 is your declaration. You bring it. If you just bring your tithe, you say, here. Don't do that. Attach a word to it. Attach a statement to it, a statement of faith. God, I'm bringing you this now. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless me. God doesn't care if you ask him to bless you. In fact, he wants you to. Tell me to bless you. Just go ahead and tell me. Just go ahead and tell me. Go ahead and tell me. Tell me to bless you. And so you say, look down from your holy habitation from heaven. I'm bringing the tithe. You said that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out a... Pour out a, pour out a, that I would not have room to receive. I promise you, we are still living in the just before the more than you have room. How many still have room? What would you do with all the room? We were in South Africa. And this, this person brought this beautiful, what was it? A, it was a picture inside of a frame, and it was beautifully done. And here you can take, it was heavy. I'm to take that back to a house that already has more stuff than the house needs to have. I, I looked at my wife, I said, honey, we ain't taking this back home. Because we don't have room. You get what I'm saying to you? Because there's a lot of things that God's already given you, and all you're doing is packing in more because you don't know that you don't have room to receive it. Lights, I was saying truth. I was just, I was just saying truth, and they did not hear the truth that I'm saying, and God... Can you just testify on my behalf? Just say amen, lights. <laughs> just because you are packing stuff away and you're looking. In fact, you hired a trailer. You hired uh, a storage room that you pay money for. Because you don't have room. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? If you are buying space to put stuff that you have, it's because you don't have room. So when he says, I will pour out a blessing that you won't have room to receive, the fact that you are extending your, your rooms. Let me just go on. I, so you're not getting this, and I'm sorry, God, they're not getting this, and I know it's my fault. Wow. You shall say before the Lord, Leviticus 25, 20. God told the children of Israel, he said, every six years, I need you to count six years, and then the seventh year, I'm, I need you to call it the sabbatical year. In the sabbatical year, in that seventh year, you're not going to sow anything. You're not going to sow anything. That year, I want the lamb to rest, and I want you to rest. I don't want you to sow anything. And when you hear a commandment like that, you, you start thinking, if I don't sow anything, how am I going to eat? Now, listen, 
verse 20. Everybody look at verse 20. He says, but if you say, what are we going to eat on the seventh year if we do not sow or gather in our crops? Say it. What are we going to eat on the seventh year if we do not sow or gather in our crops? What are we going to say? What are we going to eat? He says, if you say that, come on, if you say that, then I will so order my blessing. Some things you have to say. He said, but that doesn't make sense. If I say, what are we going to eat? He says, say it anyway. Because when you say it, I will order my blessing for you when? In the sixth year, in the same year that I'm saying to you, this is your last year to sow for a whole year. If you say in that year, what are we going to eat? Say it, please. He says, if you say it in the sixth year, I will order my blessing in that same year, and I'll do it in such a way so that when you, look at it, for you in the sixth year, that it will bring forth the crop for how many years? Three years. When you are sowing the eighth year, you can still eat old things from the crop, eating the old until the ninth year when its crop comes in. I'm telling you, this God that I serve has the power to multiply things because I make the declaration because he is teaching me to prosper. Yes. Amen. When sowing and saying are harnessed, there is exponential increase. Amen. I'm going to give you a harvest in the sixth year so that you won't have to worry about not farming in the seventh year. In fact, I'm going to give you a harvest that's so bountifully, so full, so much, you'll eat in the seventh year, you'll eat in the eighth year, and in the ninth year when you bring in the harvest, you'll still be eating. I will pour out a blessing if you say. If you say. Look at this, please. Now the king, now a man came from Belish. Baal Shalisha. I know him. <laughs> Man, I met all those guys in Africa. <laughs> I think I'm done. All right. He, he brought the man of God bread of the first fruits. Twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. And he said, give them to the people that they may eat. His attendant said, what? Will I set this before a hundred men? But Elisha said, give them to the people that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left over. So he set it before them and they ate and had some left over according to the word of the Lord. When you attach words to your offering, you inquire, in fact, inspire an immediate increase of the blessing. Twenty, he said, uh, you got 120 guys here. He says, that's okay, feed them. And there was some left over. It sounds like the multiplication of the loaves. And then there is staying power. The staying power of the blessing. Look at Ezekiel 44, 4 and 30. The first of all the first fruits of every kind and every contribution of every kind from all your contributions shall be for the priests. You shall also give to the priests the first of your dough to cause a blessing to rest on your house. Say it, to cause a blessing. When I give the first fruits, I am causing a blessing to rest, not visit, but rest on my house. How many want the blessing to rest on your house? Then let's talk about the systemic power of the blessing. Romans eleven sixteen. 16. If the first piece of dough is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, the branches are too. In other words, if I take this and I call this my first fruit and I take it from the dough, when I give that first fruit, I'm saying this first fruit is causing this dough lump to become holy just like what I gave. It's systemic. You cannot detach holiness 
and blessing from everything else that you give. You gave, and now what God is saying to you, this that you're given, I am causing this that is still remaining to be more blessed than that that you gave. Y'all believe the Bible? Then stand with me and let's make some declarations. That's the first one. The first declaration is free. <laughs> Say today, today I, stand I stand in the Lord's house and I'm convicted, I'm convicted. By, his word, by his word, by his spirit, by his spirit. and by his example. I choose to be a generous person. I choose to be a person who walks in faith. I choose to attach my saying to my sowing. I believe that first fruit tells me there's a promise. I'm enjoying the promise even now before I enter into it. I'm asking you, God, to prepare my heart and my mind and my spirit to be so expansive I will not tremble at anything you ask me to give. I believe you're going to multiply seed to my sowing. I believe when I declare this, I'm declaring it to you who told me to say it. Thank you, God, for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do, all that you want to do in this house. And I'm getting ready to make a whole lot of noise because you're a good God. Go ahead and do it. Yes. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Close your eyes. Father, we thank you that you sent Jesus to die for us and your word calls him the first fruit of those who sleep thank you father that you did not give a tithe you didn't give an offering you gave your son so today we acknowledge you Jesus as the Father's gift to the world. And we thank you. We thank you. Thank you. We thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his death, his burial, his resurrection. You said that if we believe that, whoever would call upon the name of the Lord would be saved. I want you to make this declaration today. Say, I believe Jesus Christ is the one and only unique Son of God. I believe He died for my sins. I believe He was buried in my grave. I believe He took my punishment. I believe God the Father raised him from the dead. I believe every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. Jesus Christ is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord. I believe because I declare it, because I say it, I can say I am saved. 
Hallelujah. If you haven't been able to say you're saved, this is the moment that you were waiting for. And if you, as you prayed that prayer with us, Holy Spirit was doing something in you because he was hovering over your life and saying, let there be light. Lights come. If you're here today and you're struggling because you don't have all the things that you feel like you need to have, like health and strength and unity and harmony in your family, all the things that are going on right now, and you want somebody to play, pray for you and to lay hands and just come into agreement with you that the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow are yours. I'm going to invite the prayer team if they'll just come. Jesus. You're visiting with us for the first time and you, you say, man, I, I need more today than, than I've had. This is a good time to come. This is the season to say, look down from heaven from your holy habitation, God, and bless me. Bless me, God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, lift your voice all my life. Oh, all my life you have been so. So good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love you, Lord I love you, Lord For your mercy never fails all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will see Of the goodness of God Lift your voice, come on church All my all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath Sometimes people are looking at a tradition that they've experienced somewhere else where they use the expression, open the doors of the church. And you can come to this church and maybe not figure out how you can become a part. But this morning, I want to say to you, if you have a sense that this is a good place to call home, and you, you've seen it, you've been in other places, but you feel like, man, I, I could belong to that church. And if you're here today, or if you're watching, and you believe that this could be a place that you could call home, why don't you just make your way down here to the front? Let us pray for you, and you can get started today. And if you're not a member of the church, then 
you can start here and maybe work your way to a better church. But start. This could be, a, this could be the day that changes your life. All my life. Come on, sing it. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am Dan. Call Dan. I will see of the goodness. If you're coming and you believe, in fact, you may have brought a visitor today and just say, hey, come and go to church with me. Ask them, see, look, this is a good place to start. If you're watching my live stream, just write us, call us, let us know. I believe what you said. Stretch your hand toward these who, who extended their hand. Benita, would you pray with that young woman right there? Huh? That's, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Thank you, Father. Come on, somebody celebrate God's goodness. Would you just lift your hand? Today, Father, I bless your people. I bless them with the strength and the capacity to find you in every season, every circumstance. I bless them. And the God of peace blesses you, sanctifies you, strengthens you, through every season of your life. And the Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Be gracious to you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, his Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And you say, I receive it. God bless you. Hallelujah. All my life. All my life you have been I'm going out front. Okay. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I get made, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life, all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, I will see. Of the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of
Did you want